Hello there, beautiful pixels. My name is Oladrium, and welcome each and every one of you to Project Bedrock Season 2. Yes, that's right. We are starting a brand new survival multiplayer server series here all together on the Project Bedrock server, and we're going to have a lot of fun this season. Lots of cool builds, lots of cool redstone. Uh, so what do you guys say we grab our bamboo and start heading out? Now, if you want to see the full intro that I did with everyone, you can go check it out on their channel. I'm not a big fan of standing around in a circle and talking. I want to get started building and going over to where we're going to plan out our first starter base. But when you look at this, this is a fun client side addition that I've added right here. Look at this. Beautiful flowers with variety. Cattails on top of seagrass. Hmm. I'm adding a couple of things to my survival series this year and in this season in Project Bedrock, and it's this variety flora. It's going to add just a little bit of missing life and then a little bit of variety that I feel the original vanilla Minecraft is lacking. Don't get me wrong, we're going to keep this very, very vanilla. There's hardly any mods or modifications on this server whatsoever. It's going to be very, very stock outside of a few client-specific things. But I'm going to be adding a couple things every now and then client-side just to give things a little bit more life. And the second thing that I've added, and I'm glad I saw some sheep spawn up here so I can show it off, is a whole bunch of custom animations that I've gathered from a variety of different packs. And we look at that, we look at that, this is what vanilla needs. More life being added to the game. And look at that. Bob in the head, blinking at you, and check out that swagger. I feel like that swagger, among with a couple of other changes, are really gonna add a whole lot more life to this season. Oh! Ah, the game is already trying to kill me. And that right there, that hill right there, is the place that I'm trying to get to before it gets too dark. Now, no, no, I know what you're thinking. Aladrim, you've already cheated, you've already looked at the seed. No, no, no. I just have seen it because we had to agree on what seed we want to look at. I've seen where places are in terms of biomes, and that's it. That's it. I have been a very good boy, and I haven't spoiled myself on anything. So just trust me. I don't know where anything is. This is all brand new to me. But I have seen this, and this meadow up here is where we are going to put our starter base. And I, let me just tell you right now, it's going to be a great starter base. I cannot wait to get it built out. But while we're walking over here, let me tell you a little about the server and the people on it. There's about 12 or 13 of us on the server. I don't remember the exact count, but we all have a variety of different backgrounds. We like building different things. We have a variety of different ways of building redstone, and some of us like programming. And you're going to learn to love each and every single one of them. Don't worry, I will introduce you to them slowly over the course of the season through various interactions I have. Because right now, I really just want to get over to this meadow. But it is going to be so great having 13 people here-ish on this server doing stuff and interacting together. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bedrock. And this right here, this is the beautiful meadow that I was talking about. This is where our first starter base is going to be. And uh, let me just tell you right now, it is going to be gorgeous if you haven't already seen the thumbnail for this video. I'm just telling you that right now. I don't know what it's going to look like because I haven't built it yet, but it's going to be beautiful. Now, as I mentioned, there's about 13 people on this server, and I am the new guest here, which means I have to impress people on day one if I want these brilliant and talented people to take me seriously in any capacity. So, I have a vision and a design for this season, and it's starting off here in this gorgeous meadow. It's going to start right where I'm looking at right now. I am going to build the most beautiful Aladrian build that you have ever seen. I'm thinking that I am going to put a little platform out here, and we are just going to build a gorgeous starter house that has everything you need. It's got gardens, it's got terrace, it's got beautiful roof lines, nice, tall, and a vertical. But the big thing that I'm going to be adding this season, my secret weapon to make everyone take me seriously, is this color. Color is my secret weapon this season, and it's going to be the thing that is going to define this entire season. I am going to be building things with more color and more vibrancy than I ever had before, and I am really looking forward to experimenting with it because normally I just kind of stick with nice muted tones, but color, color is going to be our jam this season, and I am so looking forward to it. Now, there's a couple people who are going to come up here. We're calling ourselves the Farlanders because we're building kind of way far out when we kind of looked at the seed map. But we're going to be starting here in this meadow. So I think a couple other people might join us later and cause a little bit of chaos. But for now, we need to get started with gathering some resources because right now all I've got is some stone tools. 
Now, the other big change that I'm going to be doing this season is I'm going to be taking things a little bit slower. It would be so easy for me to go set up an iron farm right now. It would be so easy to go set up my ultimate moss farm and not want for resources. But I think one of the things that takes away a lot of the joy from Minecraft is when you just rush to the end. I think taking things slow prolongs the game for you a little bit and really kind of gets you into a state where you're comfortable with not having everything. So I'm going to be rocking iron tools for probably a little while. I'm not going to be worrying about diamonds. I'm not going to be worrying about enchantments. I'm not going to be worrying about silk touch or any of these other things. I am just going to be playing the game uh, like I think most people do. I don't think most people play Minecraft like us content creators do because our, us content creators, we have to like book it through the game so we get content i'm going to play as if i weren't a content creator and if that comes and bites me in my rear end well then so be it but the big things we need right now are honestly coal iron and food food is going to be the big resource problem for us right now i have built a sheep farm right before i went down here that i'm going to be using for the roof of my build and they might also provide me with some much needed mud but they're going to be my main food source i'm going to try to get into bread and try to get a couple other things going for me too so that i'm not so hungry all the time i do want to solve our food problem but i don't know if we'll get to it in this episode but I just came back and discovered that there's a little bit of problem with my sheep pen. First off, uh, I've had wolf come here and kill all my sheep because I didn't put a sheep pen around it. Uh, so mainly adequate's going to come by and help me with that because I don't really have a lot of wood right now. But I've also discovered that there's a creeper inside of my sheep pen and we got to get him out before I lose my sheep again. If I lose my sheep again, uh, my entire plan for working with color this season is just kind of going to go out the window. So I'm going to go ahead and pillar up here. You can see him right down there in the corner. I'm going to try to fish him out here. Nope, that's my sheep. Don't want to get you. I want to get you out. Yoink. Ho! Oh. There we go. And that right there, my friends, is how you get rid of of a creeper inside of your sheep pen. It would help a lot, I think, to um, also put up a sheep fence. So we're gonna go ahead and get on top of that real quick. So I've started a little bit of work on the base and I've also repopulated all of our sheep. I've also collected a llama and a donkey at some point. I'm not sure how they've gotten there. I also haven't built a fence yet. I'll get to that, I promise, I promise. But our sheep are in good numbers. We're gonna use all of this wool for our roof and that is what is really gonna make things pop but i'll tell you one thing breeding sheep and a thing like this uh it takes a little bit of work especially when you don't have a lot of wheat i found myself in needing to go over to this small little wheat farm that i have right here and uh basically as long as i can keeping my cam account loaded in here getting um our sheep fed it takes a while for these to breed up really slowly and this wheat it is not the fastest thing to grow so like i said i did start work on this and let me kind of show you what i have over here this is going to be probably the thing that makes the build pop is these terraces and inside of each of these terraces i'm going to have a small little farm that has wheat or flowers or something in it just something that gives the sides of the build a, a different contrasting color and i think that that's really going to make this build really kind of set apart from both previous builds i've made and anything else here on this meadow but i do also need to get started kind of on the middle on here so uh why don't we just skip to the end or i would show you the end had i not just logged on the server a day later and discovered that fire tick was on and half my roof had burned down so uh let me go add in some defensive measures to make sure that that doesn't happen again rebuild my roof and then I'll show you what the finished product looks like. incredibly awkward time lapse later due to editing problems we are now done with our first starter base of the season and i cannot be more excited about the space that we built everything about it on the outside is absolutely gorgeous i love the terracing i love the flowers i love the wheat fields i love the trees i love everything about it it is just to me the absolute perfect starter base and i could not be happier so why don't you come along with me and i'll show you around a little bit 
So the first thing that we have obviously is the terracing and the terracing I think is what really gives this build its kind of life. We have these beautiful circular terraces with all this wheat. We have these trees, this cherry tree that I uh, stole from Gigi, please don't tell her. And it just blends the whole build together. If you look over the side here, but let's take a look inside real quick. Nice and spacious out here. I got plenty of plans to fill out this inside, but if we come out here to the back, even more terracing for us to fill out. I'm thinking down here we could have like, you know, a kitchen, maybe throw a basement down there up here on this floor. Uh, I do want to probably eventually change these out for copper bulbs just so that we can get rid of these levers that we have here. But these could be a great place to have like a little library or something. We got a nice little cozy overlook here so we can come out and look on everyone else's builds. If we go up another level up here. We've got a nice cozy bedroom over here that lets me look over out at the Tiki Hut that Adequate's building. And then over here on the other side, we've got a beautiful balcony and a couple other rooms that we could use for, you know, maybe a potion room or something something else plenty of space to look out and uh, if we go up even one more level yes that's right my starter base has four levels to it we have uh this nice little overlook that lets us look back over those mountains and i think that that is just an absolutely fantastic view we also got a little secret room up there and some some other kind of cozy stuff up on the ceiling that we can take advantage of but this is this is the perfect starter base for Minecraft. And again, I think we can probably put a basement down there, maybe throw a couple of starter farms. I do want to come out here in the front and get some mud bricks and and kind of clean up this terracing just a little bit more and give this grass a little more texture. But everything about this is perfect. And if you look over here, we have even more terraces over here. We got them so you can walk through it. If I need to harvest wheat, I can just come over here and do it. Plenty of berries that we got lying around. There's just everything that you need for a simple starter base simple for me is here here and it's all lit up with some stuff that i got from the nether mm. i am very very happy and very very pleased but with that all said i could not be more excited to start a new season here on the project bedrock server i think that this is the perfect starter base and we are off to a fantastic start and i could not be more excited to show you all the other great things that we have in plan we're going to finish the inside on our next episode and also do a couple of shenanigans once i get my uh, audio recording set up i'm not used to playing with other people it's a whole new setup for me that i'm trying to get used to but i love you all to death you are all beautiful wonderful pixels and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode